I'm Steve for This Is With Cars and today I'm back with the Ford Model A. Last time I got the car running but we ran into very big wiring issues. Here you can see these wires are just completely all melted together. The new parts have come in so let's fix the wiring and put the dashboard back together. Let's take a look at what I got. This is the dash wire harness. The wiring on these cars are kind of broken into two parts. You get this wiring which controls the engine and then all the lighting is a completely separate wire loom. On all of these early cars, you could have many different body types, so it makes sense that all the wiring is broken out and that's a completely separate system. Next, I have a distributor cap, the rotor, and then a couple of little nuts that hold the cover onto the distribution block. Uh, one of them was missing, so I decided to order both of them and make the cover look correct. Let's just get the easy stuff out of the way. Put on our new rotor. And our new cap. The wire harness has two ends, one that has these tabs and one that has regular ring terminals. The one with the tabs need to go down to the distribution block. So I'm going to try to feed this end up from the engine bay and it should come out there. see one of them it is starting to come out there we go all three wires are out on the engine base side we can see three of them right here first I'll get this old wiring out of here this is the one with all melted together I'm going to curve the wiring around the speedometer, yellow and black here. The yellow wire will be right here. Then the red wire comes over to this terminal here. With the wires connected, I connected the speedometer cable back up and then fastened everything back to the dashboard. Now on this side, the yellow wire is going to connect to this terminal here, the yellow and black over to this terminal, and the red one is going to take up to the other end of this coil right there. The wires are all hooked up. Yellow and black wire connects here, yellow wire over here, red one up to the coil. Before I put anything else back together, I think I should start the car and make sure it's working right. Right now I'm still using the fuel bottle because I don't have the gas tank connected. So I'll just fill the carburetor up with some fuel. We'll try to start it. Looks like it runs just fine. Now the coil is really hard to read on which side I was supposed to have the negative and which side I was supposed to have the positive. I'm pretty sure I have it right. But in my last video with an MGA, I showed how a coil being hooked up backwards can really affect how strong your spark is. So today I wanted to show off a little tool. This is a coil polarity detection tool. And I'm going to put it right here at the distributor cap 
And if it's hooked up correctly, this light on the top is going to flash when we crank it over. And if it's reversed, the, top, the light on the bottom is going to flash. So this lets us verify whether our coil is connected correctly or not. Just pop that in the top of the coil, pop on our lead. And then I'll turn the ignition on and crank it over. And if the top light flashes, we're okay. Looks like our bottom light was flashing. So I do have the coil hooked up backwards. So I need to reverse my wiring and then we'll try it again. This isn't a huge surprise to me because here on the wire diagram at the junction box, things are wired backwards from the way that I have it here. But that's the way this car was wired. So I was giving the person the benefit of the doubt because they were driving it this way. But obviously this is wrong. And if we hook it up the correct way, the car will run even better. When I was reversing the wiring on the coil, one of the terminals on the negative wire broke off. So I ended up just making a new one using proper terminals with heat shrink on it. And these shouldn't break. I have the wires reversed now. Let's turn the ignition on, see if the top one flashes this time. The top one was flashing and the engine runs. Now I'll put the cap back on the terminal box. The cap has a bunch of holes for all the wires. It has the coil wires coming out of the top. There is a pipe that comes out the side here. And then out of the bottom comes the wiring that goes to the distributor. And that's where these little thumb nuts come in. These hold the cover for the terminal box. One of these was missing before. I've been running the car on this fuel bottle because the fuel tank looked terrible inside. I wasn't really getting any fuel out of here at first, but the line is clear from here. This one connects there down to the carburetor. And the carburetor does leak a little bit, but it works well enough for now. Let's take a look at the other side of the firewall. The fuel line passes through the firewall right there and then goes over to a valve that shuts off the fuel from the fuel tank. I think all of this is pretty gummed up and I'm going to have to remove it all to clean it all up, but that's going to have to wait till next time. That's going to be it for today on the Ford Model A. I haven't ordered any of the parts for the next step yet. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.